dear learners welcome to this nptel course on science communication research productivity and data analytics using open source software i am dr neeraj chaurasia from central library iit delhi the topic for today's lecture is understanding research matrix author journal and article level matrix so in this lecture i will be talking about measuring the research impact what we are measuring why scholarly impact of research is measured how do we measure the impact of research work also how research impact can be measured so for measuring the research impact i will be covering the various research metrics impact assessment tools and techniques which include author level journal level article level metrics i will also cover some of the major automatic tools in my uh, today's lecture so as we know that the higher education is increasingly becoming a global business now some of the parameters like total number of publications number of citations h index quality of education academic reputation and so many other parameters are playing a very important role in branding or ranking of the institutions and for various other purposes also a good number of points or weightages has been given to these parameters all these comes from a quality research its academic and social impact so it is very important to measure the impact of research uh, for measuring the impact it is also important to understand the concept of research matrix and various impact assessment tools techniques and methods research matrix are quantitative tools that helps in assessing the quality and impact of research output they can be used at journal level article level and researcher level before moving to research matrix in details first we need to understand what is research impact as per research council uk uh, research impact is the demonstrable contribution that excellent research makes to the society and the economy the impact embraces all the extremely diverse ways in which research related knowledge and skill benefit individuals organizations and nation including the academic economic and societal impact so whenever uh, a researcher is doing research it makes impact on society economy and the academia impact occurs when research generates benefits in addition to the building the academic knowledge base there are many type of uh, research impact and researcher may have impact across a uh, number of different areas that may be academic impact cultural impact economic impact policy impact environmental impact or societal impact when we talk about the academic publishing what we are measuring we are measuring the quality of journals in which research is published research impact researcher impact article reach article impact and influence these are the things which we are measuring now why scholarly impact of research is required scholarly impact of research is very much required for strengthening your cb for getting the job promotion or getting the tenure it also help in showcasing or showing the individual or collective productivity for quantifying the research on investment or roi on research for grant renewals and progress reports the scholarly impact of research is required for future funding by illustrating the value of your research scholarly imp impact is required also scholarly impact of research is required to identify who is using your research work and confirm that is appropriately credit or not it helps in finding the collaborators within the within or outside the discipline it also helps in benchmarking self research group department or institutions and it helps in showcasing the research collaborative as well how we are measuring basically impact of researcher on their field or discipline has been traditionally been measured using the number of papers they have published number of citations they have received number of citations per paper but these were not found sufficient to measure the research in quality and quantity both so various metrics methods techniques and indicators were evolved research impact is often measured using the quantitative math methods such as citation counts h index journal impact factor etc 
Currently, there is no one tool or system that completely measure the impact of such publications. Each database or tool uses its own measurement system, indices, data and authority files. And it is difficult to use these tools to compare across the discipline that have different research and publication practices. For measuring the impact of author, we generally use number of papers uh, in terms of the quantity, number of citations for somehow find out the quality of publications, average number of citations, H index in terms of quality and quantity both. For measuring the impact of journals, there are journal impact factor, site score, SNIP, SJR and so many other matrices. For measuring the impact of articles, we generally use citation impact and few other matrices like alt matrix. Now coming to the research matrix tools and the methods. Research matrix are the fundamental tools used across the publishing industry to measure performance both at journal level and author level. For a long time, the only tool for assessing the journal performance was the impact factor. Now there are range of different research matrix available. This basket of matrix is growing very every day. It is going every day from the traditional impact factor to alt matrix, H index and beyond. Research matrix are measures used to quantify the influence or impact of scholarly work. As discussed, these are quantitative in indicators or measures that provide some evidence of impact of a research output in any form. It falls in two categories, uh, bibliometrix and other one is alt matrix. Bibliometrics are the traditional citation based matrix. They are based on the citation count, basically counting how many times a publication has been cited in another publication. Alt matrix are the web based matrix. They are used to measure the attention or the interest of a scholarly work on various type of online platforms. This includes social media, uh, research blogs, reference manager softwares, educational sites like Wikipedia, news outlets, online forums and many other online resources. Matrices are available for use at journal level, article level, even at researcher level. However, any other matrix only tells a part of the story and each matrix also has its limitation. So each of these, uh, these matrix has a specific impact. Using research matrices, you can assert your value, you can benchmark your career progress, you can communicate more effectively and so on. Now, some of the more common matrices and tools you can use to measure research impact are journal label matrix, author label matrix and article label matrix. Let's talk about journal label matrix in detail. Journal label matrix are used to determine the impact of journal on a scientific community. It measures the quality of journal using citation formulas such as impact factor and helps to track citation pattern within journal and determine which journal are highly cited. There are a number of bibliometric indicators focusing on measuring impact of scholarly journals. Most of these journal level metrics are calculated from the pool of journals indexed in two citation indexes or two citation databases. These are Web of Science from Clarivate Analytics and Scopus from Elsevier. You can see in this slide, this is the screenshot from the Web of Science. Using master journal list option, you can find out all the journals included in Web of Science. Similarly, in the Scopus, uh, using the option sources, you can find out what are the journals indexed in Scopus database. Different journal level metrics can be divided into three parts. First one is Clarivate metrics, which are based on the Web of Science database. There are Elsevier's metrics, which are Scopus based, and there are some of the matrices from Google Scholar also. When we talk about the Clarivate metrics or Web of Science based metrics, these are journal level impact factor, five years impact factor, general immediacy index, general citation indicators that is also known as JCI. Let's talk about 
clarivate matrix or web of science based matrix these are first one is impact factor in the early 1960s Irwin S. Seer and Eugene Gaufield created the journal impact factor to help in selecting the journals uh, for science citation index over the period of time however it has been adopted as a means of evaluating the quality of your research and their work journal impact factor is oldest best known and most widely used measure for assessing the journal performance it measures how often the average research article in a journal has been cited or used in other research in any particular year it attempts to quantify the importance of a particular journal in a field journal impact factor used to measure the importance or rank of a journal by calculating the times its article cited journal matrix attempt to quantify the quality and influence of a given journal for comparison purpose idea is that more heavily cited journal must be more prestigious and attract higher quality papers you can say higher the journal impact factor the more influential the journal gif is often criticized for having a two sort window for analysis which is two years and using gif it is difficult to recognize different expectations of citation rates among different disciplines now how it is being calculated it is very simple number of citations to a journal in a given year from article occurring in past two years divided by the number of scholarly articles published in a journal in the past two years let's see an example for year 2022 impact factor if you want to calculate what we have to do is the number of citations in the current year means 2022 to the papers published in the journal in previous two years those are 2020 and 2021 you have to divide those things with the total number of articles published in the journal in previous two years that is 2020 and 2021 so formula is very simple just divide total number of citations by total number of articles published in last two years so you should never directly compare the general impact factor of two journals with different subject disciplines let's talk about jcr which is general citation report jcr is authoritative source for journal level matrix from clarivate analytics and it provides impact factor for a journal jcr is a quantitative tool for ranking evaluating categorizing and comparing the journal jcr is based on the journal index indexes in web of science core collection science citation index which is sci expanded and social science citation index means ssci there is no jcr for humanities we should keep in mind that a journal may advertise its impact factor on its website but this claim should be verified in through jcr this is a screenshot from web of science you can see at right side corner jcr is there along with the other products from the clarivate clarivate analytics in the jcr you can use different options for uh, searching you can use uh, the title or the issn number or any other option for for find out the information about the journal jcr is subscription based product from clarivate analytics but previous years jcr can be found through various open access platforms like searchgate so uh, if you don't subscribe the uh, jcr you can find out all jcr from different sources let's talk about gif quartile journal's quartile ranking a journal's rec- quartile ranking is determined by comparing a journal to other in its jcr category based on the impact factor score so basically uh, the quartile are are segregated or differentiate uh, based on the impact factor of different journals each subject category of journals is divided into four quartile that is that those are uh, q1 q2 q3 and q4 so q1 contains the top 25 of journals in the list whereas q2 is occupied by journals 
in 25 to 50 percent group. Q3 contains journals in uh, in the 50 percent to 75 percent group, and Q4 is occupied by journals in 75 to 100 percent group. If a journal falls in Q1, it means the journal performs better than at least 75 percent of journals in the category based on its impact factor score. Let us talk about journal immediacy index. Journal immediacy index is the average number of citations to the articles from current year divided by the total number of articles from the current year. It indicates how quickly articles in a journal are cited during the current year. So, it is very important index. So, uh, if you want to calculate the journal immediacy index for 2023, what you have to do is the sites in 2023 to the item published in 2023 and divided by the total number of items published in 2023. So, this is how this journal immediacy index can be calculated. Now, let us talk about uh, this 5 years impact factor. This is also very important uh, uh, matrix for, uh, for journals. It indicates how much the journal being cited during most recent 5 full years. For the calculation of this, citations to the articles from the most recent full 5 years divided by the total number of articles from the most recent 5 full years. For example, for the year uh, uh, 2014, 5 years impact factor for NEGM which is New England Journal of Medicine is 54.39. So, how it is calculated? What you have to do is uh, you just take the citations uh, which is start from 2009, 10, 2011, 2012 and 2013 in the year 2014 and divide uh, the total number of papers which are published since 2009 to 2013. So, uh, you, you will be able to find the 5 years impact factor of, of the journal. Now, let us talk about uh, this journal citation indicator which is the new matrix from Clarivate Analytics. JCI is a new way from uh, the year 2021 from the Clarivate Analytics to measure the citation impact of journal recent publications using a field normalized calculation. It provides a single journal level matrix that can be easily interpreted and compared across the discipline. It is based on the journal citation performance across three full years of citation data rather than a single year's snapshot of a journal's performance across the previous two years. JCI focuses entirely on the articles and reviews. Journal citation indicator is calculated for all the journals in Web of Science core collection and published in JCR. It is the average category normalized citation impact which is known as CNCI of citable items published by a journal over a recent 3 years period. Because it is normalized, it allows comparison across the disciplines. For example, 2023 JCI will be calculated for the journals that published citable items, those are research papers classified as articles or reviews in the web of science in 2020, 2021 and 2022 counting all the citations they received from any document index between 2020 and 2021. JCI, there are various indicators in JCI. What is the meaning of those indicators? A journal with the indicator of 1 received the average citation count in its category. A journal citation indicator above 1.0 means that the journal performs better than average. With 2.0 indicating the journal performance twice as well as average and 0.5 indicates that the journal performs half as well as the average. So, the journal that received a JCI score of 2.5 performed two and a half times better than average. So, these are some of the uh, indicators in JCI. Now, what is the difference in journal uh, uh, citation indicators and journal per factor? You should know because this JCI is new uh, matrix from Clarivate Analytics. So, what is the difference in both? JCI is designed to uh, complement the GIF, which is the original and lo uh, long standing matrix 
for the general evaluation. In addition to use normalization, there are several key differences between JCI and JIF. For example, JCI's calculation on three years of publication contrasts with the two years window employed for the JIF. This three years calculation enables JCI to be as current as possible while also allowing more time for publications to acquire citations. Also, JIF calculation is based on the citations made in the current year, while the JCI counts citations from any time period following publications up to the end of current year. So, this is the difference in both the indicators. Now, let us talk about the Elsevier matrix, which are based on the Scopus database. Some of these are site score, citation tracker, SGR, which is also known as SciMago general ranking, SNIP, which is source normalized impact per paper. So, site score uh, matrix introduced in 2016, a family of eight indicators to analyze the publication influence of serial titles. Site score matrix offer more robust, timely and accurate indicators of a serial titles impact. Site score calculate the average number of citations received in a calendar year by all the items published in that journal in preceding three years. It counts all the documents since they all have the potential for text citations. So, we may say that the site score is independent of document classification. Articles in press are also included in the calculation of site score. For example, the year 2019 site score count the citation received in 2016 up to the 2019 to the articles, reviews, conference papers, book chapters and the data papers published during 2016 to 2019 and divides this by the number of these documents published during 2016 to 2019. So, this calculation is also very simple. Uh, what you have to do is the number of citations to the document published during 2016 to 19 and divide by the number of documents published in 2016 to 2019. So, you will get the site score. The four years uh, site score time window provides a robust assessment of citations to papers after their publications. Also, a four year publication window is a good fit for all subject areas and it is long enough to capture the citation peak of most discipline. So, uh, you can find out the site score or any other matrix uh, on the journal page. Like in this slide, you can see this journal has all kind of metrics on their home page. You can also find out uh, the site score matrix or site score uh, in Scopus database for all the journals which are covered in Scopus. Now, next one is site score tracker. Site score tracker helps to see how a title site score is building each month. It provides a current review of how a journal is performing during the course of the year. Site score tracker calculated uh, in the same way as site score, but for the current year rather than the previous complete years. Calculation is updated every month. Now, uh, SGR indicator, which is also known as SIMAGO general ranking, which is uh, from Elsevier, is very important matrix. It is a prestige metric for journals, book series and conference proceedings that weights the value of citations based on the subject field, quality and reputation of sources. SGR indicator gives weightage to the citations, also from where the citations are coming from. Citations from more prestigious journals means the journal with higher JCR weighted more than the citations from less prestigious journals which are having the lower SJR. So, prestige is basically based on the uh, citations from where those are coming from. The citations from important journal will count as more than one citation. A citation from a less important journal will count less than one citation. SGR uses a three years citation window and is calculated based on the Scopus sources. To raise the SGR ranking, one needs to be published in more reputed journal. That is only the way to increase SGR. 
The formula for calculation of SJR is what you have to do is the average number of weighted citations received in a year divided by the number of documents published in previous 3 years. So, this is how you can calculate the SJR. SJR is freely available and uh, you can access it. This is the screenshot from SJR and you can you can find out the country wise or general wise ranking from uh, the SJR and currently India is at level 7. Uh, if you see the country wise uh, matrix or SJR. Now, let us talk about the uh, SNIP which is source normalized impact per paper. It measures contextual citation impact by taking differences in, di in disciplinary characteristics into the account. This can be used to compare journals in different fields. SNIP normalizes for differences in citation behavior between subject fields. SNIP weighted citation based on the total number of citations in subject field. The calculation is based on the citations from subject fields in which citations are less likely are weighted more. Number of citations in the present year to the publication in the past 3 years normalizes to correct the differences between sub scientific fields. SNIP therefore measures the contextual citation impact and enable direct comparison of journals in different subject fields. So, using SNIP you can compare two journals in different fields. What you have to do is journal citation count per paper will be divided by the citation potential in its subject field. You can find out uh, the SNIP or SJR or site score in any of the journal page. Now, another important matrix is FWCI which is a uh, field weighted citation impact. FWCI takes into account the differences in research behavior across the discipline. FWCI is the ratio of citations actually received by the articles published in a journal and the average number of citations received by all other uh, similar publications indexes in the Scopus database. Similar publications are those publications in the Scopus database that have the same publication year publication type and discipline. FWCI value answer the question of whether a journal is cited above or below the global average in its particular field. FWCI of 1 indicates that the publication have been cited at world average for the similar publications. Similarly, FWCI of greater, greater than 1 indicates that the publication have been cited more than would be expected based on the world average for similar publications. For example, a score of 1.44 means that the output have been cited 44 percent more times than the expected. FWCI of less than 1 indicates that the publications have been cited less that would be expected based on the world average for similar publications. For example, the score of 0.85 means 15 percent less cited than the world average. So, FWCI refers to the citations received in the year of publications plus following 3 years. FWCI can be used to directly compare or benchmark the performance of an article against the articles because it is normalized. It is calculated using the data from the Scopus database. FWCI is a unique matrix that is only available via Scopus, Cybell and it is calculated based on the publications indexed in Scopus after 1996. For calculating FWCI, what we have to do is the citations received by the publications in the publication year plus following 3 years divided by the expected number of citations per publication received in the same time by similar publications. So, this is how this FWCI can be calculated. You can find FWCI on uh, individual journal page and calculation uh, can be done as described. Now, let us talk about uh, some of the metrics from uh, journal metrics from Google Scholar. 
Google Scholar has adopted uh, the H index method of impact for publications and H5 variations for complete five years calendar for journals. You can find out uh, Google Scholar matrix uh, on Google Scholar page. What is H index of journals? A more recent journal metric that was designed to create a simple way to represent the quality of a journal. Ideally, a method that is more reflective of majority of papers published in a journal instead of potentially few highly cited papers uh, in, uh, is the H index. So, uh, using this H index, what you can do, uh, how you can find out the H index of a journal. Uh, simply, it can be defined as uh, the H index value of a journal is the number of papers which is H published in a journal that have been cited at at least H times. So, this is uh, the definition of H index of a journal. For example, if a journal has published 20 papers that have each been cited at least 20 times, then the journal's H index is 20. Similarly, a publication with 5 articles cited by uh, respectively 17, 9, 6, 3 and 2 has the H index of 3. because five articles have been received at least five citations. So, this is how this H index of journal can be calculated. Now, what is H5 index? H5 index is another matrix from Google Scholar. H5 index is the H index of articles published in the last five complete years. A publication that had five articles, but only three had at least five citations or more would be H5 of three. This metric is based on the articles published by a journal over five calendar year. For example, H5 of 60 means that the journal has published 60 articles in the previous five years that have 60 or more citations each. The limitation of Google Scholar metrics are Google Scholar metric displays the uh, top 20 journals for each subject category. Additionally, there is no historical data. So, this is the limitation of Google Scholar journal matrix. Author level matrix uh, provides an assessment of the impact that an author makes on the scientific community or field of the study. Author level matrix are used to track how often an author's work is cited. It helps in demonstration of reach and impact of author's work. Also, author level matrix helps to track the work of colleagues and identify potential collaborators for collaborations in the projects. There are number of author label matrix which includes H index, I10 index, G index, M index, author impact factor and so on. Let us understand this matrix in detail. So, first one is H index which is best known and most widely used matrix. H index was proposed by J. Hirsch which who was physicist in the year 2005. It is an index to quantify uh, the individual scientific research output. H index measure both quality and somehow uh, the quantity of an author's paper. It also measure the quality and sustainability of scientific output as well as to some extent the diversity of scientific research. H index measure both the productivity and impact of publications. It is the metric that measures the impact of an author's scholarly output and performance. It compares publications to citations to measure quantity and quality both. So, how you can define H index? A scholar with an index of H has published H papers each of which has been cited in another papers at least h times. So, this is the simple definition of h index. You can see in this slide the interpretation of h index. Uh, this author has published number of papers, uh, but his 20 papers has uh, received at least 20 citations. So, his h index is 20. Again in this slide you can see uh, the author has published 6 papers and he has index of 6 because the sixth paper has received at least six citations. 
So you, from where you can find uh, this H index, there are a number of sources for finding out H index. You can find out the H index from Web of Science, you can find out from Scopus and also from the Google Scholar. H index is the lifetime achievement and it always increase with your citations and will only increase if it never decrease. It is meaningful when you compare H index uh, within the same discipline. So uh, this simple calculation of H index is to, if you want to calculate it manually. Uh, to manually calculation uh, of H index what you have to do is organize the articles in uh, descending order based on the number of times they have cited where both the rows are matching uh, that would be would be the H index of, of the author. This is the screenshot of Scopus. You can see uh, this author has uh, this H index of 52. He has published 269 papers which are received more than 10,000 uh, citations, uh, but his 52 papers has received 52 citations. So that is why his H index is 52. So in Scopus and Web of Science, it is automatically calculated and uh, will give you the uh, author's H index as per the Scopus. The Billet Walter uh, is uh, having 319 H index, uh, which is the maximum H index in Scopus. Uh, similarly, in the Web of Science, also you can find on the uh, H index of particular author. Again, you can see uh, H index in Google Scholar, uh, along with the I10 index and other metrics. Uh, Google Scholar will give you the H index also for the author. As per the Google Scholar, Ronald uh, K. Kessler has the maximum uh, H index. So now question comes, what is the best H index? So as per uh, J. Hirsch, after 20 years of research, an index of 20 is good, 40 is outstanding and 60 is truly ex exceptional. At the advantage of H index that is combines productivity, the number of papers they have published and the impact the number of citations in a single number. Now uh, G index is in another author level matrix. G index is coined by uh, Leo Ege in 2006 uh, which is an improvement of H index. It is an index of uh, uh, which is quantifying the productivity in science based on the publication record. G index assists the H index and gives more credit to the most highly cited papers. G index is the unique largest number that the top articles receive together at least G square citations. G index is calculated by ranking a set of articles in decreasing order of the number of citations that occur. Limitation of G index is that it is not as widely as accepted as H index. This slide shows how this G index is uh, calculated. So in this slide you can see the H index is 5 and G index is 7. Now what is I10 index? I10 index was introduced in 2011 by Google and it is the number of publications with at least 10 citations. If I10 index is 2 then what it mean? It means that two of the research paper has 10 or more citations each. I10 index is very simple free and straightforward to calculate, but it is only available in Google Scholar. Now let us talk about M index. M index is another variant of H index that displays uh, H index per paper since first publication. The H index tends to increase with the career length and M index can be used in a situation where H index is a shortcoming such as comparing researchers within a field but with very different career lines. In that case, M index may be very useful. M index is inherently assumes unbroken research activity since the first publication. It helps to normalize between those at the earliest stage and their career. M index is the H index divided by the times means years 
between the first and most recent publications. For calculating this M index, what you have to do is take the researchers H index and divide by the number of years since their first publication. So, you will find the value of M. Now, what is a author impact factor? Author impact factor is the extension of impact factor to the authors. Author impact factor is capable to capture trends and variations of impacts of the scientific output of scholars in time. So, how it is being calculated? Sites in 20, suppose you want to calculate uh, the author impact factor uh, for 2023, what you have to do is uh, you have to take the sites in 2023 to the articles he or she has published in 2022 and 2021 and divide by total number of articles he or she has published in 2022 and 2021. So, using this formula you will be able to find the author impact factor. We need to understand uh, all these metrics have some of the limitations which we need to consider. Some of those are like in case of impact factor, impact factor or H index are depending upon the citations. Citations count can be affected in number of ways. There are no single source in comprehensive. There is 35 to 40 percent of overlapping in two major citation databases those are web of science and scopus publication dates or years frequency of journal may affect the results research majors across the discipline may also differ as we have discussed earlier also impact impact factor was never meant to be used as a quality measure for researchers distribution in citation is highly skewed one obvious limitation of impact factor calculation is that the resulting value can be easily thrown off by just one or a few highly cited papers. So, it does not necessarily reflect the quality of each individual paper that is published in the journal. So, these are the limitation of impact factor. It also takes at least 3 years worth of data to calculate. So, new journals need to wait at least 3 years for receiving or for earning the impact factor. So, this is also one of the limitation. The coverage has also limitations. Now, uh, what are the limitation of H index? You cannot compare productivity of younger researchers with uh, experienced scholar. You cannot compare scholars working in different fields or disciplines. Different databases gives different H index scores depending upon the coverage etcetera. So, uh, these are the limitation of H index. Uh, measuring the uh, impact of articles uh, using the citation analysis, there are few limitations or which we need to consider. Once the article is published, different online tools uh, keep track on number of times they have cited. Number of citations are useful, but it is not only the criteria for uh, evaluate the impact uh, of author. Uh, we need to uh, see uh, uh, th there are different studies shows that articles in uh, medical field are cited the most. Science article also tend to have a uh, high citation rate. Humanities and social science articles are cited the least. Many articles are never cited. Self citations may affect the total number of citation recorded. Some articles are cited soon after the original publications other may not be cited for a future or other may not be cited for a further 5 or 10 years. So, these are some of the limitations which we need to consider uh, using these matrices. Now, let us talk about article level matrix. Article level matrix are used to uh, quantify the impact of published articles, how published papers are being discussed and shared article level matrix uh, process uses various sources of information. One is alt matrix. So, what is alt matrix? Alt matrix is an alternative to the traditional citation matrix. They can include peer reviews, citations on Wikipedia and in public policy document, discussions on research blogs, media coverage, bookmarks on reference managers like it may be Mendeley, 
or any other reference managers and mentions in the social media networks such as Twitter and all. Therefore, the data for calculating the alt matrix is sourced from the web and can give insights into the research output activity across various platforms as soon as the article is published. Article level matrix allows uh, to measure the impact of your research before it starts receiving the citations. Alt matrix used uh, the uh, DOI of such papers to monitor and aggregate its coverage across the internet. Alt matrix coined by Jason Prem in 2010 and he defined alt matrix are meant to complement not totally replace these traditional measures such as citation count, journal prestige or impact factor and H index. Alt matrix as a subset of Bevo matrix he defines like that. Simply alt matrix are matrix beyond the traditional matrix. Why we use alt matrix? Because traditional measures of impact are inadequate, citations are only a small part of scholarly ecosystem and only represent one type of impact. Most research includes journal articles are now available in network environment. So, we need to see what is going on in electronic environment. So, that is why this alt matrix is very very important. Alt matrix will provide a more complete picture of the reach and impact of research and scholarship. So, that is why this alt matrix is playing a very important role. Also for measuring the uh, researchers and research work alt matrix can help in this regard. Uh, to demonstrate the value of academic as well as the non-academic engagements and societal value, uh, alt matrix can play an important role in finding out that. Uh, to understand and join the public conversation, what is the impact or what is the what is the uh, views of uh, the uh, the public on particular particular topic, we can find out that uh, thing using the alt matrix tools. Uh, find out the research gaps uh, and the interest. Uh, this is also very important uh, uh, to see and also to discover non-traditional research output. So, that is why this alt matrix tools are very important. Using uh, alt matrix uh, various alt matrix tools, we can find out how many times someone has downloaded my article, who is reading my work, uh, has it been uh, covered by news outlets or who is uh, commenting on my work, how it is being shared which countries are looking at my work and so on. There are so many things which can be find out using automatic tools. Now automatic data is aggregated from many, many sources. There are number of sources from where uh, this automatic data can be aggregated. So that may be uh, GitHub or Mendeley or Close or Set uh, and so many other databases or maybe Fixshare or Slideshare, Wikipedia and all. There are no number of automatic tools and some of them are uh, like automatic.com, impact story, close article level matrix, plumex matrix, then reader meter, uh, science card, paper critic, crowdometer and all. So there are some of the uh, automatic tools uh, which can be used uh, to find out the automatic score of particular research or any share. What is Altmetric.com? Altmetric uh, was born uh, as uh, it is a London based startup uh, uh, founded by uh, Ion Audi in 2011. Uh, they, their mission was to make article level matrix easy. Individual users and librarians can use Altmetric.com with a free account uh, with a commercial license is required in case of publisher or funder or the institutions. Automatic score is a quantitative measure of quality and quantity of attention that a scholarly article has received through social media. This is the screenshot uh, you can see you can find out uh, uh, the automatic score using this, uh, uh, this website. Another one is impact story. Uh, it is an open source web based automatic tool. Uh, impact story uses the ORCID ID uh, ORCID to find the data and import scholarly work. It aggregates impact data from many sources from Mendeley to GitHub to Twitter and many more and displays it in a single point. 
user uh, create collections of materials through the online identifiers such as Google Scholar, uh, DOIs and PubMed IDs etc. Impact Story uses more than a dozen of APIs to search for metrics. Uh, the Impact Story account can be uh, synchronized with Orset uh, to update automatically when new content is published. Scholars need to enter the information about these articles such as DOI to generate an impact report. Another important uh, article label matrix is PLOS uh, article label matrix. PLOS is an, uh, a non-profit open access publisher empowering research to accelerate the progress in science and medicine by leading a transformation in research communication. Uh, it is a project started in 2009 and PLOS uh, article label matrix uh, tracks the usage citations and uh, social media activity for all PLOS articles. These matrix compromises of data points that capture the ways in which research articles are read, saved, shared uh, or commented uh, or cited. PLOS uh, has begun to uh, track impact matrix beyond just citation count. It has developed software that will track the number of times an article is shared using social network tools such as Facebook, Mandalay and some of the other social media websites. Now next one is Science Card. Science Card uh, is an automatic tool for website which collects matrix automatically in different ways such as citations, download counts, alt matrix in different disciplines for a particular researcher by a unique author identifier. Next one is reader meter. Reader meter is a cloud computing and massive visualization author level matrix and it is based on the consumption of scientific content by a large population of readers. Readership data is obtained by a Mendeley API and analyzing readership data on can help discover areas of real time impact that may not be visible to traditional citation based metrics or measurements. Crowdometer is uh, also provide web enable service which displayed tweets linking to scientific articles and allows user to add uh, semantic information for betterment of digital services among users. It results of such crowdsourcing efforts can display it in real time. Paper Critic is also one of the uh, automatic tool which offers to researchers uh, a process of monitoring all type of feedbacks about their research work in exhaustive, expeditiously and pinpointedly. Apart from this, it also allows every researchers to easily review the research work of others in a relevant field or subfield. Another important tool is Plumex matrix. Plumex measures the individual works of a research scholar. It is founded by Andrew Michale and Mike Bosman in uh, late 2011. Plumex is tool uh, to harvest matrix from various online sources and impact dashboard for measuring research output. Plumex provides both alt matrix and traditional matrix. It divides the type of interaction into the five categories which include uh, citations, usage, captures, mention and social media. It is integrated into Elsevier product like Scopus, Science Direct, Cywell and Pure. It is a subscription based product and uh, it is available only via subscription. So in all the products from Elsevier you will find uh, uh, this sign of uh, Plumex matrix and it will give you the complete data on those five components. If you can go to the particular journal website or the particular journal page, you will find out uh, these kind of alt matrix scores. So several publishers are providing such information to the readers including uh, this uh, Frontier or Nature Publishing, Springer Nature, Elsevier, ResearchGate. So now journals, they are having the uh, the salt matrix score on their website or publisher website or uh, individual uh, journal page. Now what is alt matrix score and why it is important? Alt matrix data can help researchers to understand how their research is being interacted with by the public government, policy makers and other researchers. 
Automatic score uh, are measures used to gauge online consumption, perception of research papers within the non-scientific community. With these outsourced data, public reactions can be effectively captured and analyzed by the experts within the short period. Automatic score uh, for the research output provides an indicators of amount of attention that it has received. The score is derived from the automatic uh, algorithm and represent a weighted count of amount of attention picked from research output. Automatic score can gathered immediately as you publish your research work. So now at the end I would like to summarize uh, research metrics do not replace the traditional ways of uh, accessing the research impact. Uh, for example, uh, peer review, research funding, practical application and so on. They simply provide this additional data to make impact assessment uh, more accurate and meaningful. Research metrics must be considered in context any direct comparison should be made carefully. The researchers field of study as well as career length of researcher will greatly affect the citations and attention the work receives. Research metrics are not universal. They are limited to the data sets from various platforms from where they are drawn. Citations count in various citation databases we differ and different metrics track different data always include the source uh, of any impact metrics you are reporting. I would like to quote uh, Albert Einstein, he rightly said that not everything that counts can be measured, not everything that can be measured count. The practical part of uh, all these metrics will be covered by uh, uh, some of the other colleagues. At the end, I would like to uh, express my sincere thanks to various internet sources and also authors of uh, those internet sources used to prepare this talk. Uh, the per presentation is mainly prepared to create an awareness among learners in the field. Uh, so I, I would like to acknowledge all those sources. Uh, thank you very much once again for becoming the part of this NPTEL program. Thank you very much.